Hey guys, still here and welcome back to War on the Sea. After the previous encounter of submarines versus a Takao class cruiser, which ended up with a submarine lifting the Takao right out of the water um, before dropping it back down as the submarine was sinking, the Takao group is still alive and there is not that much that I can do against that at the moment, short of sending in Task Force 20. Task Force 20 has four submarines and is eager for blood. So we're going to send these guys north, which is where the task force was. The Dauntless Sea is over here. Unfortunately, I don't believe that they have anything, but let's check. Because I thought that these guys were RTB. Yeah, they're empty. So those guys, unfortunately, cannot be used. And since it's past the launch date or past launch time for the Enterprise, I cannot have her do anything at the moment. Same for the DD Hunters. I'm going to have to wait for the Enterprise to strike with her aircraft before being able to go on another attack with the um, cruisers. In the meanwhile, we were able to neutralize the airfield at Buka, and Task Force 21 is going to link up with the Hornets, Task Force 19, and make sure that the Task Force from the Washington... Yeah, Washington has some uh, air cover. And on top of that, we're going to need a lot more ammo... Because in the current condition, if this task force encounters a surface group, well, the DDs and the cruisers can still work, even though they have been seriously damaged. But the Washington can only pitch in 238 uh, armor-piercing shells, and the rest is a couple of high explosive, and that's it. And then, of course, we're down to 8,005-inch shells. But most smaller ships don't care too much about those. The uh, Bluefish and Blackfish are still RTB, Gato is still defending Port Moresby, uh, and my ears, and potentially yours as well, considering that those Japanese task forces, when they bombard, they can be incredibly loud. TF-16 on the way home, picking up supplies. And I know that I'm not doing that great when it comes to completing my objectives, but so far I feel like I've mostly neutralized the Japanese ability to attack in the area at this point. Because most of them are currently disabled. Um, the airports, that is. And I have sunk a good portion of the Japanese Navy. Now, the sneaky boys have an encounter. I wonder with what? It's not an airfield, so it's, it's not planes. Because Florida Islands, well, everything here has been knocked out. So it has to be some sort of surface group. Let's see. What are you guys looking at? If anything... Hey, hello. Contacts. Uh-huh. I think we found another Congo. Because even I can tell you that that is not a Musashi. So, we're going to say that this guy is a battleship of the Congo class. And it's not the Congo itself, so it could be the Hiai, the Kirishima, or the Haruna. And then it has some escorts... Um, I still don't exactly know what these things are. We're going to say the Japanese. I think that's a safe bet. Two turrets side by side on the deck. Hatsuharu. I think Hatsuharu is the only option here. Target one. Elevated turret on the deck. It doesn't have one of those weird things on the stern. Uh, torpedo launcher wise, this doesn't add up. No, 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 no. Yes. Possibly a Fubuki. No, not a Fubuki. Or, well, no, sorry, not a, an Akatsuki. Could be a Fubuki. Not a Hatsuharu. Yugumo, is that possible? No, I think we have him. I think it is a Fubuki class destroyer. Confirm ID. Flying Fish and Growler are in a pretty decent position to go on the attack. I just need to turn them around. And I want to sink the Congo. I mean, of course I want to sink the Congo. It's the main target. Alright, you're going to come left. 
The plan here is to sink the Congo and then uh, get the hell out. Because I'm not eager to stick around and take on the destroyers. I have torpedoes for them, but I'm not looking for that fight. Oh, sorry, you already were building a solution on the Congo. Range, 4,400 yards. Growler's going to turn around to port. Flying fish to starboard. I might be able to get a pretty decent crossfire here. If I don't entirely mock it up. No, you're going to have to turn a bit harder. Give me the scope. Flying fish status. Scope. There you are. Whoops. Gentlemen. Solution 60. I have seen better than that. Considering my solution is not that good. I'm going to go with the six torpedoes at a bit more of a dispersion. Let's say five degrees. And we're going to launch. Range 2600 yards. Good enough. Now, as they will detect the torpedoes, or at least start to respond once they know that the torpedoes are there, or once they know that something's been hit, I'm going to have the Growler disengage and prepare the Flying Fish for an offensive. Okay, my torpedoes are out. So we're going to go to 200 feet, lower the scope, disable the radar, and continue turning to starboard. At full speed, I went ahead over there. Flying fish, steady as she goes. We're going to keep an eye on the situation and see if we can hit the Congo for a second salvo. If, we, well, if we feel that she needs one. She might. We can reduce speed to one knot. Actually, I think the view from the Congo might be more interesting. And this is not strictly the view from the Congo, of course, but it's still... Yeah, there are the torps. It still gives you a bit more of an indication of what's going on, torps-wise. Oh, please, don't tell me I'm going to hit the destroyer. I'm going to hit the destroyer. Wrong place, wrong time. <laughs> the one time that all torpedoes run through, I strike the destroyer. <laughs> oh well. <coughs> Sorry. I guess we don't have to worry about that DD anymore. Growler's on the way out. Congo. Whoa. Where are my dud torpedoes? What the hell? That was five torpedoes. There goes the Hatsuharu. That was five torpedoes, but um, I'm used to some of these being duds. How is that not happening? The Congo was struck twice and seems to be on fire. The Fabuki, I think, is charging to the location of the Growler. Let's disable the radar. She might not know that I'm here. Oh, they're going to clip through each other, aren't they? Because they can. Yep. <laughs> That's how new ships are made right there. Congo is getting a bit too close now and behaving too unpredictably for me to launch torps. I don't think they know where I am yet. They know where the launch position from the Growler was. But they don't know about the flying fish, because she hasn't made her presence known yet. One problem that I do see is that the Congo is going to get too close. Meaning that I will not be able to launch the torpedoes before... Well, no, not before, but with the torpedoes still being able to go hot. I need them to arm. Give me radar again. 680 yards. And two torpedoes at the bow. Solutions 56. Fire. 
torpedoes away. Really close range to the Congo, but it should be okay. This poor saw just got hit on the port side, and now he's going to get hit on the starboard as well. Oh, don't course correct too much now, Torps. Don't course correct too much now. A bit to starboard would be great. And that is a bit much. Yeah, Congo is course correcting. Fortunately, I didn't spend all torpedoes on that attack. I still have some of them left. We have four more. Active sonar. Give me the scope. I'm going to get the solution up. But this thing is zigzagging all over the place, making it very difficult to land torpedoes accurately. Solution 70, 72. The thing is speeding up by 24 knots. We're going to fire. Because I think the damage against the Congo is not as severe as I would like. The Fabuki seems to be interested in the Growler. That's good. So the Flying Fish can stay here. Okay. Growler. Do we have a layer? We do not have a layer. Okay. Worst comes to worst, I could sort of surface, go back to periscope depth, and launch four torpedoes out the stern. But I'm rather hoping that these torpedoes are going to do something useful. Just not sure. But what's the damage on the Congo? Because you got torp twice. Moderate damage? Reed, we didn't care about your torpedoes here. I didn't know Congos were this sturdy. Fabuki is slowing down and listening. Go back up to, let's say, minus 50, 50, 60 feet. That thing's closing on us in a hurry. Flying fish, steady as you go. Range 700 yards, depth 150. But we're coming up. I still love the look of a submarine. Sleek, and it just says deadly, this whole thing. It will get you. Well, sometimes. Just usually when I'm not in command of it. Although I did manage to sink a submarine that was not even my target. Hard to port. I'm going to prepare a torpedo stern for... What's the range? 400 yards. This thing is way too close. Way too close. 370 yards now. Growler's already maxed out for speed. I cannot go any faster. Congo's changing her heading again. But I don't think she knows about the Growler. She can't. Range. 500 yards. She's making it difficult, though. Heading. 219er. 218. 217. She's turning back to port again. Hmm. Give me... Oh, the solution's terrible. 54%. And the problem is it's too fast. Still doing 25 knots. I cannot intercept that. I'm lucky if I'm doing, well, about half that. Oh, I think the Fubuki might have taken an interest in the flying fish at this point. That's not great. Stop. Hold on, what are you doing? You're not doing much.
dare I launch one torp at her. No, she's turning. She's moving away. Congo is still running for her life. I think she might still be hunting the Growler. What? Sorry about that. Um, I managed to hit him with the Dud Torp. I think that was the stern launch from the Growler. Or it was the long-range launch from the Flying Fish. Oh, that got him. I had no idea I still had Torps in the water which we were able to do anything useful. What salvo was that? It might have been the bow set from the Crowler. Curious. Status? Fubuki at 1300 yards. She seems to be listening. 14 knots. I only have one tube ready though, that's not enough to sink her. Let's leave and come back later. Stas in the Congo. Still moderate. Three torpedoes and the thing is not budging. I think she is very interested in killing the flying fish at this point. Let's go down. Speed to full. Down scope. I think she has me. Now I'm going to cruise directly at the submarine. Or at the destroyer. It's a risk. But it means I'm susceptible to dive char or depth charges less for a less duration, less long. The shorter I can expose the sub to the depth charges, the better. Range is 720. 700. 650. I'm just going to sort of race past each other. What's the test depth on these things? 295. Go deeper. Fubuki should be appearing any moment now. There. You can just see the shade of the hole there. What's she doing? She's doing 15 knots. She's going too fast to hear me. Hold on. Opportunity for a stern launch might just have presented itself. Or she... No, she's coming around. Can I still leave? In two minutes. Damn. Can you assist? That way, please. Growler. There's the DD. Turn. Ideally, I'd still cancel this whole encounter. But I'm not sure if that's going to be workable. Ninety-six seconds. I can rig for silent running on this sub, but I'm cavitating, so they'll they'll see me anyway. Uh -uh. Doing any nasty things yet? Oh yeah. Where am I looking at? There we are. She's definitely dropping depth charges. Whew. Life's about to get pretty unpleasant for the flying fish here. 
Leave in 55 seconds. Oh dear. She didn't get me yet. Slow down. Range, 300 yards. She's still too close. Stop. New solution. Target Fubuki. I have two torpedoes ready. Three in another 10 seconds. Stay deep. Your depth is 60 feet. You should be ready. Three torpedoes. Manual fire. Distance 1400 yards. Whoops. Well, that was a pretty shit solution. There's only 28. Unfortunately, that did, yeah, that did just reset my uh, my leave timer, retreat timer. There's the destroyer again. Keep a distance. Damage report? Nothing. But it looks like one of those might actually clip me soon. Don't get me. Torpedo status. This thing is going all over the place. Here are the torps, I think. Flying fish. Still healthy. Two torpedoes ready on the bow, four on the stern. Range 600 yards. I might be able to torp her, but I'm too deep. Where are you? Here you are. I wonder when the Fabuki is going to run out of depth charges. She's listening again. Five knots. That initial torpedo salvo that came out of the Growler is definitely not going to do anything. I'm not even sure where they are at this point. Here. Doesn't look like anything. She's speeding up again. I have my stern tubes ready, but the ship is just too close. 750 yards and approaching. Uh, too deep to fire torps. Here we go. At this point it doesn't matter. We're going to have to turn again. Depth 150. Growler. Stern tube ready. Come right. See, I can sort of predict where the ship's going to be. The Fubuki. If I could just hit her with a few torps, even one would slow her down. Mm. Shit, I lost her. That was not part of this plan. There she is again. I know that she's going to be overhead the flying fish. I don't just know exactly when. That's the challenge. Solution 50. Scope and radar. Where is she? There she is. Built that solution. 60, 62. 64. We can't wait anymore. Fire. Torpedoes away, five degrees spread. Uh, flying fish, this is gonna get pretty uncomfortable. And another problem is that if I turn the ship around, I'm effectively pulling the Fubuki off of the torpedo prediction. So I can zigzag a little bit, but I cannot do a full 90 degree port turn. This is an interesting cat and mouse game. 
Oh, here we go again. Torpedo to our depth charges. Torpedoes are inbound. Please. This would be the perfect kill. Oh, it might just work. Unless she speeds past them. Which I think she is. Nope. One hit. That's going to be enough to slow her down substantially. Flying fish. Stas on the bow launchers. Three ready. Uh, I think it's time for you to get back up to periscope depth, buddy. Just do it slowly. That was a fantastic save by the Growler. Really nice work. She is having a really rough time of it. I have one torpedo loaded on the bow. Status? Heavy damage and heavy flooding. I think we can take her. I just might need to use the guns because the torps are too close. Uh, the ship is still doing 11 knots. Current depth, 220. We're still too deep. 600 yards. I think she's too busy da uh, doing damage control to effectively be hunting me. She is still coming right though. 218. 220. If I want to surface anywhere, it's in front of her, not behind her. Depth, 160. Okay. Range from flying fish, 685. Solution, 34 and building. Get back to two knots. Just very, very slowly inch your way to the prey. Fubuki steady on course 226. Depth 30 feet. You didn't get me yet and you're about to regret it. The thing is heavily bladed to starboard though. Solution 56, 58, 60, 62, come right. 66, 70, 72, holding at 72. Sea state, 4. That's the problem. Torpedoes away. I still have four more on the stern, but I'm starting to run a little low on the bow. If I can get one more hit, I think I can get rid of there. She just needs to maintain her course. She's still on heading 226. Where are my torps at? There they are. Come on. Please don't be one of those DDs that finds a way to dodge them. Or don't be a dud. Gotcha. I'd say that ship is sinking, alright. Look at that. That is not healthy. Putting it mildly. Is the damage critical? It is. She'll probably sink. Time accelerate. Congo is still here. Still running around with only moderate damage. Me. There she goes. Well... If that's how we're going to do it, I might still have an opportunity to sink the Congo. Just got to be careful not to surface. Range is 11,000 yards. We have 
torpedoes ready in the torpedo room of the flying fish. The growler is still loading and also has torpedoes that are going to be ready. The ship is doing 19 knots and appears to be heading southeast. If she maintains a steady course, which she's not, we might be able to nail this battleship. So that would be two submarines taking down two destroyers and a battleship. That'd be a really good result. This is going to take me a bit of time. After a fair bit of maneuvering, and I'm not sure what the battleship's doing, it's being really unpredictable, even though it has no idea where my subs are, although if it's the AI, they might know. Um, the ship kept zigzagging, turning, increasing speed, decreasing speed. I'm not sure what it's doing or why it's doing it, but now it seems to have found itself at a place of 1,600 yards away from the Growler. The flying fish is slightly behind, and... I'm still not sure if I can actually torpedo the guy now, because it keeps being so, so unpredictable that for all I know it's going to be turning again, doing some sort of, well, I don't know, not crazy Ivan, but crazy Japanese, and completely throw off the torpedo solution. The torpedo solution is pretty good, 70, 72, range is 1300 yards and decreasing quickly. I'm already down to one knot, so I cannot slow down anymore. But it's all down to what the Japanese battleship is going to do. And unfortunately the angle at which I'm going to throw at the torps is pretty bad. What I could do is manually fire at them. But I think that's just a waste of torps. Especially since I have a pretty good solution. Although it might... No, you know what? It might be an interesting way to practice my torpedo manual fire. One torpedo. Uh, yeah. There-ish. I suppose. Torpedo away. Let's see if this thing turns in time. And does or does not become a dud. Now would be a great time to start turning. Come on. E yeah, that was not great. But, well, actually, no, it might hit. Shit. <laughs> it is a dud. The firing range is now 400 yards. So I think it's now not useful to throw torpedoes at her. But Flying Fish is in a better spot. Although now the Congo, probably woken up violently by the Dud's torpedo slamming into the hull, is changing course yet again. She's turning east. So we're going to do the same thing. thing is behaving so weird. It's like she's now sort of aware of where my sub might be. Course 138, 139, 140. It's like she decided randomly that doing a starboard course correction is a perfectly fine plan. I'm just not sure why, what she's basing that on. And again, the flying fish solution is completely gone. Solution 68. You know what? Give me all four torps. But we're going to do that with a five degree... F thousand feet? Or sorry, thousand yard? Four degree spread. Not manual, thank you. Now keep your course. Be a good little battleship. And eat a torpedo or two. Which hopefully won't be duds. So we can call this thing a day. She's steady on course 167. Speed 19 knots. 
And there she goes again. For no discernible reason, as supposedly the, the, the AI cannot detect submarines or torpedoes. I mean, they can detect submarines if you're a destroyer. Look at that. There's the torps and there's the battleship. The alternative is for the Horner to just strike this thing out of existence. That might be easier. Because I keep throwing out torpedoes, which generally don't seem to do much. Yeah, let's leave. Although, where's she going? Yeah, let's leave. Still, um, I fired a load of torpedoes, but I did get some rewards. I sunk a Hatsuharu, or at least, I think, and a Fubuki. Let's check if that's correct. Summary, enemy losses. Hatsuharu and a Fubuki, would you look at that. We sunk the Ariake and the Fubuki itself. So, that's the Sneaky Boy's position. Unfortunately, it's 2321, even though the battle time said 020, I think. Um, a Hornet might be able to launch aircraft in, well, six hours. And maybe the sneaky boys here can just keep an eye on that surface ship. Although, that Congo is going to be a level lot faster. Anyway, we'll chase it down in the next episode. For now, I hope you enjoyed this cat and mouse game with the DDs. I'm glad I sunk those two destroyers and not lose any destroy or at l lose any subs. Uh, they're both perfectly healthy. They're just a little low on torpedoes at this point, but still workable. Thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for the next episode.